Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. I'm here today with Marcelo Velos. He's the CEO of the City Tattersalls Club in Pitt Street, Sydney. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Alex. How are you? I'm good. I'm very happy to be here. It's a beautiful club, and uh, I just recently became a member because I was here for the launch, and you said that it's excellent value, and $10 for three years of social club membership. I know the gold and silver is more, but... Uh, Wow, I've been here the past uh, couple of days and it's magnificent. Mate, and we're very proud to have you as a member too, I must say. Well, thank you very much. So look, I'm here to talk to you about the new Corporate Concierge Business Lounge, uh, which we're in as we speak. The, we can see just one tiny corner of it in the background there, but uh, also the launch of the new Young Professionals Network. But first, can you please remind us of the rich heritage and the storied history of the club and just how long it has been in the heart of Sydney? Well, Alex, the club has been around for 124 years. It's a centenarian. <laughs> it's, um, we, we're actually very excited about next year, when, obviously, when we're going to turn 125. Mm. So we've got some great celebrations planned, um, and where we invite most of our members, all of our members, and obviously the community to come and celebrate with us. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about the club, obviously, sort of, you know, it evolved from horse racing, and that's our tradition. Um, some bookmakers got together and, and created a club, and and that grew to be a place where they used to settle bets here on a Monday mm -hmm. um, after the races. Um, and he continued to play that, you know, that important part of the social fabric of Sydney where people came and, and, and spent some time, you know, settle their bets and then continue to drink and eat and, and, and it became the social hub that it is today. It was social media of the, uh, the 1920s, as it were, as opposed to all the internet stuff we have today. <laughs> it, it certainly was. And, but, um, but yeah, it's, it was, it's evolved. Um, we, we've kept that, that sort of, you know, that, that, that tradition, you know, mm. we'll see probably that, you know, where we are here today and some, some corners of this, of this club are, are very traditional and, and that's the charm, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you've got the, um, we're in the uh, business lounge, which I've seen described as like a Qantas club style environment, although it looks much snazzier, I can tell you, I've been okay. in the Qantas club. And, but instead of being next to the airport, we're right in the middle of the city. So how would you best describe the new business lounge? And what gave the the idea to create it? I should probably start by saying that it was actually at the Qantas Lounge. I was I was, <laughs> I was flying back from 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 Melbourne yep. and um, and I had uh, I was doing business over there with our joint venture partners, ICD Property, mm -hmm. um, and and while staying at, at the Intercontinental Hotel, um, I, I had access to to their business lounge, which I thought it was incredible. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, and then on the way back, I was at the Qantas Lounge, and then I quickly realized that what I had experienced both at the Intercon and at Qantas, we could quite easily try to replicate mm. the, um, within a space of our club, which is the space in which we are now. Mm. Um, on top of that, I thought that we had enough of a network of people. We've got 16,500 members. And I mean, amongst that membership, we have a lot of people that, um, that work within the city that I've got business within the city, but also in the surrounding suburbs. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be quite um, good to create something that gave them the opportunity to escape the, you know, the business of their, of their own offices of the city and to come and spend some time here in a, in a, in a full concierge driven um, business lounge. Yeah. And so what are some of the features and benefits that membership provides and you know, what, what does it all include? So all members of the club can, can have access to this facility. Mm -hmm. um, there is a, it's got a price tag of $12,000 per annum. Mm -hmm. um, and with that 12,000, members get access to things, for example, that can work here at the club, at the business concierge from eight o'clock in the morning till 7.30 at night, Monday to Friday, five days a week. Mm -hmm. We have made um, enough changes to the lounge so that you can actually work from here. This could be your workspace. Mm -hmm. It could be your, um, your, you could have your boardroom, the monthly boardroom sessions in, in our boardroom. Um, you could dine at, here at the club. Um, you can organize, so you can come here, for example, in the morning at eight o'clock and, 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 and have breakfast mm -hmm. um, or afternoon tea at three o'clock, or you can have drinks between 5.30 and 7.30. If there is three concessions of which two are included in that price of membership. Sure. Um, you've also got full access to the gymnasium um, and you can also bring a guest um, to, to conduct your business dealings. Sure, and you were just briefly mentioning that, that all members have access, but obviously there are certain things that are reserved for members of the business lounge. So whilst all members have got access to it, and you really, you have to pay entry to, to, of $12,000 yes. to be able to, to be part of, of the sure. club. So that, we realised that some of our members were actually crying out for some exclusivity. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. You know, private so we, spaces. Private spaces. Uh, there's a lot of business people that, that use our gym facilities downstairs. I can proudly tell you that we're up to 24 members, four members joined within the last 
um, late, late last week and two joined this week. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, look, the uptake is great. We, it's not a mass mass advertising campaign that we're looking to do. It's, sure. it, this is going to be um, more driven by, by 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 our own members that are going to use word of mouth and referral yeah. to be able to to grow our membership moving forward. Um, the other key aspect of this is also our network. So we, you know, we have a, an incredible network. Um, we, we, we're lucky. Yeah. And out of those sixteen and a half thousand members, we have some incredible people here, and we meet monthly. We have we'll have monthly events where we'll be able to to explore further opportunities of how we can work together and how we can add value to our business. Sure. And to me, that is the real differential um, of, of of being a member of Corporate sure. Concierge. And I understand now what you meant was that all members have access, the existing membership base can, they're the ones who can apply. You need to be a member of the club first before you can then apply for the business lounge. But yeah, 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 no, no, I get it. So um, one of the things at the launch, I was showing you how you could do, use some cool features of your phone, the secret mouse cursor that people don't know is in their iPhone, as an example, and, and various other things. And you said, oh, this would be make a good you know, informational education session for the business uh, lounge members. So I thought to myself, as I'm putting together the questions to talk to you, you know, what other kind of educational leadership or business sessions might you be having here on a regular basis as an extra benefit for the members? Well, Max, I was I was incredibly impressed with, with what you showed me. Um, um, I think there was a dictation facility on the phone that yep. I was unaware of, um, and and I and I, I did mention to you that it would be great to work with you to see if we could actually do some some you know, some tuition, some open yeah. forum well, to our members. People don't know, and it's all these cool features are there, and and it, and it adds value. It yep. adds add value to our lives, to our efficiency. Um, so, no doubt, you and I will probably be able to stage one of these one of sure, those sure. on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's important that we start with our own staff and members before we make it public. Yeah. Um, but um, I can tell you that, for example, we have a new series called In Conversation With, mm -hmm. um, which is, um, it's, it's come out of the City Touch Young Professionals Network. Mm -hmm. Which we'll talk about in a, in a moment. Yeah. And, and some, of, some of the educational things that we are going to be doing with them is that every two months we'll bring some forums. Um, kept about 40 to 50 people mm -hmm. and we'll talk about various um, subjects such as leadership thought leadership um, we we close one today with um, CBRE where we'll be talking about you know the, the future of Western Sydney mm. um, and, you know and, and where should people should, whether should people should be spending in Western Sydney and what are the opportunities um, and a whole raft of other educational um, subjects that we'll bring to our members. That makes me think you might have a Western Sydney Tattersalls Club in the future. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, did, we, did, we do like the, the CTC part yeah. of our brand, which mm -hmm. is City Tattersalls Club, yeah. which it kind of lends itself to a country Tattersalls Yeah, club. absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, the expansion opportunities are there. With the history you've got, there's, uh, it's almost surprising it hasn't already happened, but clearly the focus on the business capital of Australia is very important. Now, um, uh, so I was going to ask you about uh, how membership's gone so far, but you've already answered that question. But also I noticed that um, when I've been just as a member in the club, you know, very fast Wi-Fi speeds. Uh, my parents are members of clubs in Canberra and there's very slow speeds in those particular clubs. But here I was getting over 100 megabits download and 140 megabits upload. And I mentioned to John Doringer, one of the front staff, that uh, about how surprised I was, how good their Wi-Fi was. And he said, yeah, Marcelo had, you know, got, had this whole club upgraded and... Uh, so what was that process like? What did it cost and did you have to upgrade to fibre? So so we did. Um, we're lucky enough that obviously there is fibre connectivity coming yeah. into the Sydney CBD. You're in the, C you're in the CBD. So we right. basically just had to tub in and, and bring that, that that into the club. Look, over the last two and a half years that I've been here, we've we've, we've invested in excess of $300,000 in, in hardware and technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and I think that I think we were running uh, 30 meg up and 30 meg down when I first arrived. Which probably at the time wasn't too bad, but you've more than tripled, quadrupled that. We had to. Um, you know, we've invested heavily on our CRM, so we've just launched Salesforce, for example, so mm -hmm. that we can so we can understand our members better. Yeah. And, and, and when you have a database a system, a CRM system like that, like Salesforce, obviously we had to improve our, our Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, but I think it's sort of part and parcel of, of being in, a, in, a, in, in that space today, yeah. which is the business concierge. There'll Absolutely. be nothing more frustrating than, than coming to a place where you know where you're paying good money um, to become a member of, and, and, and you can't get files uploaded or to perhaps or downloaded. Yeah. So that that was critical for us, and you know we've also spent a lot of money here in relation to power, mm -hmm. um, wireless charging stations, so people can be comfortable. And you know if you, we all have that moment where our phones are running out of battery, 
Um, so we thought about what are the little pains that mm. we can that we can pain overcome. Pain points that you what can. The little pain points that we yeah. can overcome. That's it. Um, and, and I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I definitely I can endorse the, the, the <laughs> speed of our internet. Me too. Look, I've been all over the club the past few days, and it doesn't matter where I am, I'm getting fast speeds. How long did it take them to do the upgrade job? The oh, workman. Um, it, 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 it was months because yeah. you know we had to you know you, you apply for these things and you'd be put on a waiting list. Yeah. But um, but all, but I can say that um, now um, 2019 and, and we, you know we've we're fully geared up for for our next future adv advancements. Absolutely. Now you also launched last week the Young Professionals Network, and mm. at the launch event it seemed that there was like hundreds of people there, a lot of people in their 20s and 30s, but I saw plenty of adult age groups there as well. So what are the goals of the network, and what are some of the events coming up soon? I noticed on the big uh, boards that you would be having a Melbourne Cup event, and there'll be other things coming soon, no doubt. Yeah, so look, that, that, that's probably one of the most important things that we've launched lately. You know, corporate concierge is important to us, but but to create a network and, 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 and an opportunity to engage with the future leaders of tomorrow mm -hmm. and our future members, yep. that it, to us, it's, it's, it's one of the most um, important points. So um, City Touch Young Professionals, it's an idea that grew up out of me um, going through an old magazine of the club in its heydays. I think it was back in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And you could see the amount of young people that would have frequent this club, uh, and some of them are members that I recognise from the photograph today. Yeah, <laughs> today, and and I realise that um, that it is important to have a, a, a succession plan, a renewal plan of our members, mm -hmm. uh, which meant that we needed to start creating offers that were more attractive to those, um, you know, to those people to that, that work in the city, yeah. of which we got many. Yeah. Um, when, when you were here the other night, you you know, we had three hundred people yeah. in the room. Um, it was packed. Most of them have <laughs> never been to the club before. Yeah. Um, but what I can tell you is that the feedback that we received from the night was incredible. Um, you know, they, they, they really want to be part of, of the club. Um, so I got a phone call today from somebody that was actually here on the night and he's having, having a private event, 500 people, mm -hmm. and they want to use our lower bar for an after party yep. after that function. <laughs> so, you know, some of the business opportunities that have come out of that uh, were phenomenal. Um, some of the events that we'll stage, yes, you know, we've our City Touch Cup, for example, which has been running for 109 years at Ramwick. Mm -hmm. This will be the first year on the 26th of, 6th of October that we'll have the City Touch Young Professionals event. Right. So we've allocated a space for uh, 150 to 200 people to buy tickets into it mm -hmm. and have their own, um, their own group, you know, their own network where they get to enjoy our race day. What else can I tell you? We, we, you know, we're going to be part of the um, urban polo, the polo in the city at Centennial Park. Mm -hmm. And again, that has also been driven by this network of um, city touch young professionals, which are incredibly agile, and there are and there are coming to us with so many fresh ideas. It's so it's it's, it's great. Now, I was doing a little bit of research to learn about, more about you and the club, and I noticed that uh, you signed on to become the CEO in late 2016 after a stellar career in club management, property development, and the club industry, and. Uh, you formally started in February 2017, so it's been nearly three years. You're about to head into your fourth. What have been your proudest achievements, beyond the ones you already mentioned in that time? What lessons have you learned and what has surprised you? Oh, I think um, I, I think that the highlight of my time here is to is to have become friends with, with many of our members. Um, I The networks and the friendship that I've created here, the support that I've received from people, um, I, I have been invaluable to me. Not only today, but for my future career. Mm -hmm. uh, the success that we enjoy today, and, and, and the club looks very different to what it did um, almost three years ago, I must say. So it's myself. But um, yeah. but, it, but it wasn't just me, you know. It, yeah. it wasn't a magic wand that I could just, you know, You had to integrate things. with the team and work with everybody and bring them on the journey. And we did. And some of the members and some of their feedback and some of the, you know, some of the free advice and some of their support, that, that, that to me was one of the most invaluable things and one of the um, greatest things that I've experienced. Um, to see the club today, to see that it looks better, to see that our staff, you know, that the morale's up, that, that our membership is, is up and that revenue is up and that City Tats, our brand, it's resonating with the city um, just as strong as it did back in the 1960s and 70s. Mm would have to be the proudest thing for me. So as we get towards the end of the interview, how do you see the club evolving over the next decade? Uh, I've got a couple of other questions, but I, I noticed that the, you wanted to build a hotel. Yeah, so we, we are um, uh, hopefully only a few weeks away from hearing um, from, from the City of Sydney Council in relation to an application for a mixed development, mm -hmm. a mixed development that will see this club being fully refurbished 
across its five levels. Mm -hmm. We will look to add on a 110 room hotel, which will be owned by the club, mm -hmm. and obviously a residential tower of 242 apartments above that. The ultimate membership uh, benefit, right? <laughs> you get to you get to eat, play, work, and sleep in the same place. That's it. Yeah. Um, I I see the future of this club um, as very dynamic. I see it as very sophisticated. I see it as um, not only a social club, but but a bit more of a Soho house, New York. Mm. I see it as something not exclusive, very inclusive, inclusive, diverse, but sophisticated yeah. and dynamic, where yeah. people would want to come and and, and 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 spend time and meet friends, and and again, you know, relax and do sport and and more importantly, be part of something that has supported Sydney, that has been part of Sydney for so long. And an incredible hub to the rest of Sydney and the world. I think so, I think you'll be great. Um, we have, um, I don't know whether you know or not, but we have 250, we have a reciprocal arrangement with 250 clubs uh, worldwide. And to know that we're going to be welcoming members from other clubs and to, to, a, to a hub in the middle of Pitt Street. A world class hub where they can be so proud of, of, of being part of this reciprocal network is something that I think will, um, will be something that I'll be happy to walk away with, you know, in, in three, five years time when this project is finished. So uh, one of the questions I always like to ask is, you know, change gears a little bit, is just simply to say, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received to help you get where you are today? I, I, I think I think he came from a, from a guy that I used to work with mm -hmm. and, and he said to me, we were, we were looking to, to, to create um, a piece of communication and I asked him to, to, to check it for me before we went live and he said to me, he said, you don't need me to check it. He said, don't ever forget the man in the mirror. He yeah. said, don't ever change, don't ever pretend to be somebody that you're not. Mm -hmm. He said, stick to what you do and stick to what you know and be yourself and he said, and you'll be fine. So I reckon that men in the mirror stuff, don't pretend to be somebody else. It's probably the greatest piece I've ever received. Excellent. So what is your final message, not only for ITY viewers and readers and for your current and future members, but also for those interested in the business lounge, uh, for the business men and women of Sydney, the rest of Australia and the world? Oh, look, I'll probably be that stay tuned. I think that we're gonna, now that I feel more comfortable doing interviews, I'm not much of an interview guy. <laughs> um, but I think I'll be, I'll be more than happy to, to do more of this and talk people about some of our workshops that will be coming up mm -hmm. to talk about you know, how the club is going to start using artificial intelligence to be able to provide uh, better service to our members. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know, if, if you've got time, drop in, come and say good eye, come and have a coffee, experience corporate concierge and, and, and our facilities. And I'll be more than happy to tour people around. Well, Marcelo Veloz, the CEO of the City Tattersalls Club in Sydney, thank you so much for your time. And I look, I'm so happy to be a member and I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Thank you so much, Mike. It's been Thanks. great.